Hey, it's Bart again, and today here in Computer Sound and Music, I want to sort of give you an overview of the course and talk about what we're going to be doing and looking at as far as topic material for the last, uh, for the next uh, 10 weeks. Last lecture, I went over some of the mechanics of the course. This is intended to be the other half of that thing. So let's just get started. I don't think there's much to mess around with here. Uh, so first of all, oh, first of all, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm thinking of you all in this difficult time, but first of all, as far as course stuff, here's the section from the syllabus that we kind of skipped over the most last time, which is goals, topics, and objectives. We write these things every time we teach one of these courses for the ABET folks who uh, do accreditation to let them know what we're up to, and we write them so that you know what we're gonna be doing this quarter. So here's the things I claim is that upon the successful completion of this course, students will be able to identify and process standard representations of digital audio, PCM, WAV, FLAC, MP3, MIDI. So we're going to talk a lot about how audio is represented in a computer, and that's gonna be a big deal and represented for transmission. That's going to be a big deal of this course and something I really want you to get a good handle on because I think it provides a good foundation for stuff you'll do after the course is over. We're going to use digital signal processing techniques to work with audio, including both time and frequency domain methods. So that sounds pretty fancy. Uh, I don't expect anyone coming into this course to be familiar with digital signal processing necessarily, but probably 20% of you have done a little bit of it. It's a bit challenging and we're definitely not doing a real, air quotes, digital signal processing course here. We're going to try to get some of the basic stuff done, build a few working examples, and sort of learn how to work with sound. Because just record, storing and playing back sounds boring. We're going to make you know, new sounds and we're going to process existing sounds. We're going to, along those lines, we're going to understand how common digital audio effects work. We're going to try to understand how it is that sound is normally processed. You've all heard reverb, you've all heard wah-wah pedals, you've all heard auto tuners, and we're going to talk about sort of how those things work and how you can build your own. And in some cases, we'll actually have you build your own so that you can understand these effects. We're going to synthesize sound because I sort of feel like that's one of the funnest things you can do is make your own noises from scratch out of nothing or out of something very different than what you started with. So I'm going to talk about four or five different kinds of sound synthesis. And again, some of them I'll have you do, all of them I will demonstrate for you, and we'll get a good idea of how digital sound synthesis works. If you want to build a synthesizer, this is a good starting course. And finally, and this is the part that may be scary to some of you a little bit, but it doesn't have to be. For those of you who are already familiar with music structure, music composition, analysis, and generation of music, if you make music, if you know a lot about music and music theory, that's fantastic. It gives you a leg up. If you don't, one of my jobs this quarter is to teach you some of the basics of that stuff. I think you'll find that you can learn quite a bit really quickly. This is not a music course per se. There again, you know, the music department has whole sequences in this stuff, but we're going to take a few weeks and sort of figure out this stuff at a basic level so that you can understand what's going on. So if you manage to do all of those five things in 10 weeks, you will have met my goals for this course. I found last time I taught it that this was doable, but it is a challenge. There's a lot to keep up with. So you really need to get on top of it and stay on top of it because a lot, this is a big fire hose. A lot of information is gonna be flowing by fairly quickly. So let's, having said that, let's look at the actual course dates and that sort of thing. Uh, first week is going to be about sound and about the very basics of sound representation. A uh, thing not listed on the course objectives, but a thing that's sort of a prerequisite to everything that was, is understanding the physics of sound and understanding how sound actually works, computers or not. That That's going to be a thing that this first lecture will be about, and it's gonna be a thing that you're gonna to need to understand to understand how computers can work with it. We'll also talk about the human ear, because sound isn't just something you make, sound, sound is something you hear, 
and hearing is an absolutely integral part of any sound experience. And so we're going to talk about how hearing works and how that affects everything we do. Finally, we'll talk a little bit about the mechanics and electronics that go between your computer and sound. And that's going to be, again, a topic of an early uh, short lecture is sort of how computers interact with sound. Um, that's, again, I don't expect anybody to have any electronics background. I don't expect to have anybody to have any physics or mechanical background. So we'll teach you what you need to know in that score. Second week, Digital Audio Signal Processing 1. We're going to talk about the time and frequency domains, which sounds really fancy, but it's not that big a deal. I want to get you comfortable, though, with the idea that representing sound as a waveform over time isn't the only or oftentimes even the best way to think about it, that representing sound as a combination of frequencies is often a better approach. We're going to talk about the discrete Fourier transform, which is the tool for converting between time domain and frequency domain representations. And then, having gotten sort of the basics under our belt, we're going to talk about how you use digital techniques, computer techniques, to do some of the audio tasks you need to do on the computer using the knowledge we've got so far. And so there's going to be a lot there. There will be quite a number of short lectures there as we sort of explore the basics of how you go transform these computer representations of sound in ways that correspond to what you want to do. And then, having done all that, well, we're going to talk about sort of the applications of all that digital signal processing stuff in actual sound manipulation. So we're going to talk about psychoacoustics. We're going to talk about sound compression. We're going to talk about digital effects. I, I plan to spend quite a bit of time both this week and the following week on how the digital effects work and how you produce them, because I think going through the history of effects is a good way to get a handle on what modern audio processing looks like. And having started with that, well, we'll go ahead and continue right on into what if I'm not just processing sounds, what if I'm making sounds? We'll talk about wavetable and sampling synthesizers, which are maybe the simplest kinds of synthesizers to understand in some ways, and get a handle on how those work. And having done that, then we'll have a week that is the fancier techniques. We'll talk about additive and subtractive synthesis, which are two classic techniques for building synthesizers, both in the pure analog domain and in the digital domain. But in the digital domain, these things are quite straightforward to do, and you can get some fancy effects that way. And then we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the even fancier modern synthesizer tricks. We'll talk about FM, which is not very modern anymore. It's 30 or 40 years old, but it's modern relative to some of the other techniques. And we'll talk about granular synthesis, which is a really interesting idea. And we'll poke at some other ideas, including some stuff I've been having fun with recently about how you can synthesize sounds in interesting ways. Okay. So by week seven, I think this is um, week six, I guess, I expect you to be pretty far along in uh, the sound part of this course. I expect you to be able to do reasonable things as far as acquiring, processing, generating, outputting digital audio. Um, and that's going to be the big push at the beginning. If that drags a little longer, it drags a little longer. But I found last time that we were able to get there. Then we have right now scheduled a couple weeks of music theory. Uh, by the way, those slides, I haven't asked permission to reuse those slides yet that are on the Moodle. So I'm going to have to do that in the next day or so. I just realized uh, hopefully they'll still be OK. But regardless, there will be a week, maybe only one week this time instead of two, but there will be at least a week of um, of talking about music and the specific things about music. And that'll be kind of light on the computer stuff at first, but eventually the computer stuff will start to kick in. And by week nine or so, we will be actually looking at how you can not just generate music how with a computer, but how you can actually 
analyze music with a computer, which is a really challenging, challenging thing to do. Um, and finally, in week 10, we will talk about full on AI music generation as sort of a closing topic for the course, um, ways that you can actually make your own music and sound uh, by writing programs that do it for you. So that's what we've got planned for this quarter. It's a long, big, challenging syllabus, but I think it's pretty doable. As always, please be on the course Slack. Please be on the course Moodle. There will be readings for you to read. There will be discussions to be had. And if you can, please show up for the synchronous lectures and we can have more time to demo and discuss there. Thanks much for listening. Looking forward to working with you this quarter.